Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of Behind the Visual with Mark Hansen, where I talk to all those people responsible for the images and videos you see out in your world every single day. I am your host, advertising and lifestyle photographer Mark Hansen, and today my guest is photographer, fashion photographer from London, Nathan Richards. Nathan's been on the podcast once before about a year or so ago, so if you didn't hear that one, you should really go check that one out and learn all about how he got started and uh, how he got over to London. And in this one, we just a little catch up, see what's going on with him. We talk about uh, some shoots he's been doing since lockdown ended and what he did during lockdown and how he um, got to shoot for Mimi London and some other clients that he's been shooting for regularly. Seems like once he gets a client, he's a constant repeat. He's a great fashion photographer. Look him up, look at his images, check him out on Instagram, check him out um, at Nathan Richards. I think it's photo.com. I'll put it in the link. So uh, check that out. But um, yeah, we talk about, we have all kinds of stuff. We go everywhere from what he's doing now to how he gets clients um, to our s- stories we've heard about Stephen Mizell to, you know, what it's like to shoot a cover for a magazine that doesn't get used in your portfolio for whatever reason. We also talk about the benefits of constructive criticism and how we both think it helps and how um, actually I think we're both happy that we get constructive criticism from people when we do. So check this one out. Be sure to like it, comment on it, subscribe, thumbs up it, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, let me know what you think about this one also. Enjoy it. Uh. Well, dude, what has been going on with you? Okay, so the last time we talked, you were just, you just moved out there, just got, you yeah. had you gotten married at the time or you were just about to get married? I, I think remember. I had just gotten married. Yeah, I think that's right. That and sounds- you, you weren't doing a lot. No, I wasn't, wasn't doing too much because um, the timeline was moved here, got married, got a visa so I could start working straight into lockdown. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it was kind of like, um, yeah, straight, straight into the sit inside and stare at each other for half a year scenario. But, but yeah, ever since that first lockdown lifted, I've been, um, knock on wood, I've been pretty busy. Sounds like you've been killing it. Yeah. Well, everything I've been seeing on Instagram looks like you just nonstop. I'm trying. I, I hate being bored. So, um, that's kind of, what were you what? doing during lockdown? Nothing. Um, let's see. We've had three lockdowns. So lockdown one. Oh wow. Xbox. Okay. Uh, I bought an <laughs> Xbox. My dog's angry yeah, at me. I, I see. Me. I see your dog in the in the mirror back there. Yeah. Barking at cool. me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Lockdown one was <clears throat> nothing but Xbox and trying to stay creative any means necessary um Are you shooting at all like for yourself so I, I set up like a backdrop in the flat yeah and then uh tried to photograph my wife and dog as much as possible <laughs> um, and neither of of them were happy about it let me toss in this toy so he'll be quiet see th- this is my life about 99 percent of the time it's trying to work on my computer and getting barked at <laughs> <laughs> That, that's my life i have a chair right across from my um right across from my desk and my dog comes in and just jumps up in it and lays in it see it's not like that what you got going on over there see norman's pretty good until you need him to be good and oh, then he's yeah. like no it's time to be a pain <laughs> so yeah that that's my life I'm, I'm a good uh house husband while annabelle does her real job of teaching she teaches mm. what's she teach she's year one so like first grade basically okay yeah so i always say she has a proper job and i get to play for a living yeah that's what i say like my wife has a real job and i don't i just yeah it's like it's like when people ask me like oh what's the worst thing about your job like dude there's nothing bad about my job i get to make a living holding a camera it's great (laughs) yeah anytime somebody on set or whatever we start anybody starts complaining like listen it could be a lot worse we are not sitting in a cubicle wearing a suit with you know fluorescent lights hanging over our head every single day in front of a computer nonstop. 
Oh yeah. Like, Although I am in front of a computer if I'm not shooting, uh, it seems like. I was going to say, I'm probably in front of a computer more than I'm behind a camera to be yeah, fair. If, if I ever quit being a fashion photographer, I could be an amazing secretary for somebody. I can send an email so quick. I'm like, done. It's, I've gotten so good at emails. But well, that's good to know. I'll send you some yeah. people to email for me. <laughs> yeah. Send all Are you your doing all your own retouching? Yeah, I do. It looks good. Thank you. Um, yeah. I think that just comes from like being way too perfect. Cheap. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> cheap perfectionist. You know, it's all the same, right? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Because it's yeah. kind of like when you used to shoot film and you take it to the lab and they develop it and print your shot and you look at it and go, mm, yeah, you got to print that again. I don't yeah. Like um, that. Yeah. I, I just, because when I go into a project, I know what it's going to look like when it's done. Yeah. And so it's just easier for me to like stay hands on the whole way than to have to like pass it to somebody and then, then bring it back and me pass it back. And yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's, it's just easier because I hate it's like I said, I hated going to the lab. I like digital now because I can control it all the mm. first time. I don't have to sit there and have it printed and look at it. No, you got to fix this, fix that, fix this, and then have them redo it and then charge me half the time because they think it's my fault, not their fault. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. This is going to be the most unprofessional podcast. One sec. Got it. It is completely okay. And Jake drops his toy. Look, here you go. There's that. I don't know which toy to give him. He wants them all. There's that one. <laughs> one more bark and he's getting locked in the bedroom. Oh, and he's back. He's back. Come here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Come he just here. wants attention. That's all it is. <laughs> it's an hour. Come here. Come here. This, this is I was going to say, you can hold him. Where'd you, where'd you name him from? Why was there? Norman. Um... Or do you just like so, it? So my wife's favorite singer is Lana Del Rey. And okay. she had her new her album at the time was Norman Rockwell. So uh, okay. Norman. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah Norman's gonna go take a nap. <laughs> Good night, Norman. There we go. Professional. Exactly, man. Hey, it's the whole it's a whole different thing now. Oh man, yeah. It's a... Uh, the, the other day, I had a, a pretty important, like, kind of business Google meet with a, a client of mine. And um, they, it was the meeting where they talk numbers. Oh, and yeah. So, of course, he's been asleep all day. It's great. And then as soon as that meeting starts, he's, like, out the window, like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and like, and it, was, it was so difficult because, like, one of the people was, in, like, in Hungary and the other was, like, in Italy and the one person was in London. I was just like, and then I'm sitting here and my dog howling at the freaking sunshine outside. Oh, dude, what was that for? Can you say? Yeah, it was for a jewelry campaign. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So how are you getting all this work all of a sudden? No idea. Um, really? <laughs> God, I, I Instagram? I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a lot of word of mouth as well. That's cool. Um, yeah, it, it goes to show the importance of not ever burning a bridge or anything like that. That's and, for sure. And being nice 100% of the time. But um, yeah. yeah, I got the jewelry campaign because another one of my like commercial fashion clients, the art director was being used for the jewelry campaign. And so she, like everybody else in the industry, has photographers she likes to work with right. to bring to the, another project. And um, yeah, I just got a random email one day that was basically like, we heard you're a nice guy. <laughs> I was like, cool, thanks. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Have you ever had it where you had a client and you were working pretty steady and then they quit or move on and you just lose the gig? Um, I've never lost a gig, but I have like not gotten rid of a client. That sounds really mean, but outgrown oh, yeah. Yeah. their needs where – what I was charging was a lot more than what they needed to spend. Right. Yeah. We're like so, four grand. And they're like, well, we only have a thousand. Yeah. yeah. Will you do it for publicity? I'm like, no, yeah, my, oh, my, God, my God. mortgage doesn't get paid on publicity. <laughs> I was just talking to my agent about that yesterday. She was like, mm -hmm. you know, we're not doing anything. We don't do anything for publicity for, you know, bylines whatever that doesn't yeah. happen. I was like, yeah, I haven't done that in years. And another thing I don't do is I don't do the, 
Well, if you'll do it for half of your normal price this year, next year when we have more money, we'll use you again and we'll pay you your normal rate. Yeah, yeah. That never. I did that twice. Guess what? Never yeah. heard from them yeah. again. That full rate never came around. Yeah, never got the full rate. One of the companies went out of business. The other, I yeah. think, um, I don't know. I'm, I think they went with somebody who told them no the first time, but was going to charge a lot more money. So they assumed they were better. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. That was, yeah forever ago i feel like every maybe not every time but there's always the first time you work with them there's always that like trying to reel them in oh yeah little negotiations but um yeah i really want to get an agent so i can stop emailing as much as i do yeah the the good thing about it is i've only had this my okay this agent is that i have now maria is really good Mm -hmm. um she's been in forever she's actually trying she's working it's a little tough right now but i think for, yeah. for the level we're going after with her it's a little tough to get in the door but i think it's gonna happen by the end of the year my first agent ever got me a job shooting a barbie toy packaging thing or whatever with nice. this you know and they were cheap i mean this was probably 2000 2001 something like that and they said they came to her and she called me she goes listen they're saying they want to pay you two thousand dollars for a day for two days two thousand dollars a day for two days and then you have to take your assistance out of that and any of your expenses out of that right and at the time all i was thinking was barbie packaging it's a pretty cool deal. Yeah. Just to be able to that shot for Barbie. The money, four grand for two days, not happy about it. Especially when I got to pay for my assistants, you know, my assistant, my DT, you know, everything else out of it, lighting, all that, because it was in New York. And oh, I, was like, I don't know about, I was, I was thinking, my thought was, fine, I'll do it. She's, but before I could say anything, she said, I told them no, that wasn't happening, that you were going to get 2000 a day and they were going to pay all your expenses, your assistance and everything else. She goes, and they came back and said, okay. So that's the best part about having an agent, especially one who's not concerned about the money because they will yep. sit there and they'll, they will make sure that you get closer, if not exactly what you're supposed to get paid, where you might go, sounds like a cool job. I really could use that four grand. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take it, even though I really start thinking it's better than that. nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 With the agent, they're just like, I don't care. If we lose it, we lose it. We'll find another one. And yeah, they just, see, next thing you know, you're getting paid more than you thought you were going to. I, I feel like I spend 90% of my life on Instagram and then email. Like, those are my two things. Yeah. Um, and it's quite depressing when iPhone sends you that like weekly summary of how long you've been <laughs> on your phone. I was like, oh, like it was the last two weeks have been pretty busy planning this coming up week starting tomorrow. And, um, Oh, it was like weekly summary. Your thing was up 70% for a total of five hours a day. I was like, no wonder my eyeballs hurt all the time. I'm like, yeah. crying them. Hey, it seems like it's working though for you. I mean, yeah, I'm not complaining. It's, it's great. Um, yeah, I love every second of it. It's How great. many followers do you have on Instagram? Like 3000 something, 3000. Well, damn. Something. Yeah. I don't well, know. you got more than I do. I mean, I got, like, yeah. I got I less than 1,200. <laughs> I've got 3,824. Hey, you're almost at four grand. As soon as I hit that 10,000, I'm just going to become an influencer. There you go. I'm going to be taking like hair vitamins. <laughs> talking about how thick and beautiful my hair is. Hey, are you not already getting emails asking you to promote crap? Um, I, I got one. But I think these like spam people who like send a bunch of these influencer emails think yeah. I'm like a lady because I post so many like female. Posts. Oh, yeah. And it was like, we think you would be great for being a promoter of our new brand. It was like bikinis. I'm like, I'll try it. But <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to lose followers. I really think you should. And you should put it on and you should tell everybody how great it is. I'll I mean, I feel like I'm going to do that as a self portrait. It's going to be the opening picture to every portfolio I do from now on. You should. <laughs> the tone. I'm sure that'll help me get an agent real quick. It may help you get some jobs. You never know. It depends on how uptight the company is. Hey, that's true. I mean, yeah, pe people, when I'm on set, they realize real quick that I'm, I'm not a sit there and not talk kind of guy. So that's, that's probably good. 
yeah. Fun. I hope so. Yeah. It's better than just being the guy who just sits there and doesn't say anything. Although well, I heard it worse for Stephen Mizell. I heard he doesn't say Jack. That you don't even talk to him. Yeah, I've heard stories about some of like the world's best people that can they kind of just walk in the room, do it, and then float out of the room. Yeah, I heard um, Stephen Mizell shoots from a tent sometimes. Like he has a tent, his camera sticks out of it, but you don't even really see him, and he just goes so, in it yeah. and shoots. I've heard I've heard mysterious Mizell stories. I was at Pier Fifty Nine at the same time as Mizell was doing some video project in like the studio over. Yeah, and there was like a security guard at the door like you couldn't come in unless you had clearance and it was like i kind of like being the guy i'm I'm like peeking through the crack yeah. and all it was a black tarp i'm like yeah gummit <laughs> <laughs> i just want to touch my zeal no kidding like maybe some of that success will rub off on me yeah. dude i heard um one of my assistants years ago told me that stephen klein was shooting for calvin klein mm-hmm and um, he ran into a friend of his who was assisting that day because they were working in the same studio, but in different portions of the studio. Yeah. And the guy said, he was like, who are you shooting for? He said, we're doing Calvin Klein, Stephen Klein shooting it. And he was like, where is he? So he's right over there. And I said, oh, wow, cool. Well, the next day he had to go back up to the same area and get some stuff. And he saw his friend again. He was looked in the studio and was like, hey, he was looking around. He's like, where's Stephen? He's like, oh, he's not here today. We're shooting everything and sending it to him for him to approve it and tell us where to, you know, what to change. And then I was like, seriously? And you know that dude was getting what, probably, I don't know, hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day oh, to shoot that. He was making money just to say his name was on it. Yeah. Yeah. That was I, crazy. I, an assistant of mine was telling me about there's another photographer. The industry's small, so nameless. Right. Um, yeah. But he didn't even hold his own camera for a job. Like an assistant held it. He looked in it, hit the shutter and then walked out like one frame. And then the assistant, he liked it. And the assistant shot the rest of the shoot. I was like, that sounds so boring. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. And then I, and then I was told like, Oh, if you keep shooting, you won't even never have to set up your own lighting. I'm like, that's part of the fun. It's like oh. me and my assistants before, before the storm of a shoot, just like chatting and like, taking funny like test shots that's that's one of the most exciting parts of the day yeah, i used to have a whole thing when we would do color charts i had like this whole folder of just like funny color charts either from yeah. the models doing it or the assistants doing it or whatever yeah the whole thing i was to the point where i was thinking about making a coffee table book out of just oh that would be amazing color chart shots i, I want i want to um make a coffee table book and try to find a handful of blinking shots from every shoot I oh did. yeah you just call it like blink or something like that I, think I, I, worked with, I was working with this one stylist constantly at one point and every time she would get in front of a model and lean over to fix anything right around their waist i would take a shot of it and take the shot yeah so it's like her butt and like leaning head down and i was like i'm gonna make a coffee table book out of that too <laughs> yeah just, just make her a calendar every <laughs> year of her working <laughs> there you go it's just your butt and your head and their crotch hey whatever works hey man right it, she's she was good or she is good so she's doing her job That's yeah, it. talking about the whole shooting thing i heard um who was it demarche and i'm guessing it's every guy Demar- at this yeah, yeah, yeah. level that they basically the assistants come in set everything up put it on the tripod take the test show it to him he goes okay and then he goes over and he goes stay hey, yeah that's good yeah. good and then they walk out yeah but i guess when you get to that level you can do I it mean, however you want to do it I just, I just like to be as hands-on with what I do as, as possible. But one of, my, one of my, the guys who assist me, um, he knows the style I shoot for this one client. Yeah. So I think it was the last campaign I shot for him. I barely looked at the screen while I was shooting. I would shoot a frame and, and he just, he knows his lighting. He's got the technicals. He's up there with his light meter while I'm oh, having yeah. coffee and chatting with the client and he's just popping all these lights off. And then he just hands me the camera and he's like, you're good. Those are the days I feel pointless as a photographer. And I'm like, <laughs> did I do any of this? But yeah, where I'll just shoot and I'll just be like, how's it look? Yeah, it's good. Keep going. All right. And then the only thing you'll hear is check your focus. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that occasionally too. I just get too excited. And I'm like, boop, 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 boop. yeah, I'll do that. I go, I start shooting. If I really like it, I'll start doing moving and like shooting yeah, a lot yeah. faster. And they go, hey, stop, check your focus. All right. All right. I'll go yeah. back. Is that good? Yep. All right. Let's start bang, bang, bang. Occasionally, I get the pro photo pack screaming at me that I'm shooting too fast. Oh, yeah. that long. And you're like, oh. <laughs> Sorry, everybody's awake now, I hope. I had a friend blew one of those things up. 
Dang. He was doing a casting and it was like right. thousands of girls a day over like a couple of days uh, and just blew one up. I'm well, assuming it had some issues ahead of time before. I mean, it. there had to have been something happening. Have you ever had a pack blow on you? Um, I think I might have had one pop near me when I was at RCC. Yeah. And it, it was an old like Speedatron box. Yeah. The yeah, Speedos, you know, like, man. It I've went, had it, it pop on, twice. It the cable before yeah. it, uh, yeah. Um, I, I was throwing like, the cable out. Really? I was shooting. It was a headshot. And I was shooting and had this little Speedo, like an 805 yeah. Speedo pack. And you heard this huge boom, like somebody shot a gun. And I looked yeah. over and the cable had been blown out of the pack. See, I, I'm good. I, I feel like when that happens, it's like the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. Like people are walking <laughs> around the studio looking for things, like laying on the ground. <laughs> but yeah, it. When it popped at school, I think what happened was somebody was shooting and then just took the cable out before cutting the box off. Oh, yeah. And there was a loud shotgun noise. Yeah. I just went out and I went, me. Yeah, those yeah. things are harsh, man. I had that. And then I had a um, Dynalite pack one time pop and blow. Wait, no, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't pop. I think it just basically fried. So yeah, it just. Those popped. big. Uh, the big battery packs are you don't you don't play around with them. Uh, uh-uh. no, I don't even use them anymore. I'm using mono lights all the time now. Yeah, the, the light I use ninety nine percent of the time is the Pro Photo B one X. Oh yeah, battery in. Yeah, have one charge. Yeah, yeah, I like those. So what? All right, I want to know what was the first campaign you shot, or the first anything you shot and got paid for once the whole lockdown. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I think it was for this fashion brand called Mimi London that I, I still shoot for them. Um, I think they were the ones. And that was one of those like mysterious emails that just shows up. Like somebody up there is looking out for me and just sending me occasional emails. Um, but yeah, they, I think they were the first ones like after lockdown to be like, hey, shoot. Are they me. international? Maybe. Are they just like England? I know they're based in London. That's all right. I know. Okay. Um, based in London, some of the teams from Scotland, and then they get a short American photographer. That's how <laughs> that's how international I know. Hey, they want to get it from all over, man. That's it. But um, yeah, they're they're really good people, and they're um, they've got a good creative team over there. So. What kind of usage do they want? So it's it's weird. So like, I don't really negotiate negotiate usage usage. usage. I'm learning to speak still. <laughs> Photography is easy. Talking's hard, man. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of like one set price. Right. Um, but before I we set the price, there is kind of the so what's what's going to be happening this time? And it's always right now. It's always um, like the normal thing: social, website, and then that that's it at the minute. But um, yeah, could be print down the road. Well, that's all right. Yeah, the ones I hate are the ones where they go, "Well, we want." Well, I don't hate it. I hate it when they say we want unlimited usage forever or we want to own it and we don't want to pay you more than like a normal business to business day rate. And you go, right. do you it's really right about that? Yeah. I had one recently. They wanted to own the images and I was like, I'll like give you unlimited right. usage, but I'm keeping the copyright on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't, I don't play that. We own the copyright thing. Supposedly that's the whole thing with pharmaceutical. Really? Yeah, that they want to own it. And Lowe's does. Lowe's owns the images and they don't want to pay anything. Hey, and unless those pills are wearing a Saint Laurent dress, I doubt I'll be photographing them. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point. Yeah. Yeah. I, like honestly, all I do is uh fashion. I feel like I feel like in North Carolina there's a lot of people who um like the industry you have to like shoot a lot of different things yeah and then here like it's like pick one and you're good at it which is i try and it's not and i say it's surprising but it's not surprising because it's you it's surprising because there's so many people who try to shoot fashion yeah who don't do a good job of it and everything i've seen coming out of you lately has been it looks like it is at a national international level and Thank it you. is not it's like some dude who 
just moved to London or just started, you know, trying to shoot fashion and, right. you know, it's, oh, hey, that's pretty good. I mean, you look like you've been doing it for years and that Thanks. you've been doing that at a high level for years. And yeah, it's impressive, man. Yeah, that, that means a lot. Cause yeah. Every time I look at your stuff, I'm just think, damn, that's, yeah, I, I never was able to really do it like that. So I never really tried to shoot anything more than like high-end catalog fashion. Exactly. When I look at my work, it's, I'm like, I guess you would say like my own worst critic. Oh, yeah. So I'll shoot something like tomorrow. shoot. I'll shoot it. I'll be in love with it. It's my baby. The next day I'll start going through and I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty good shoot. And then by the time it comes out, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, thanks, man. It means a lot. The worst for me is when I do a new shoot and I think it's good because it's new. Yeah. And then I take it to somebody and go, what do you think about this? And it doesn't happen so much anymore because now I've gotten more critical, like you said, and I'll do it like I just did a shoot. And I thought this while I'm shooting, I was like, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. And I just started going through it the other day. And I was like, all right, these are pretty good. I can use that. I'll tweak that. That'll be usable. And yeah. who knows, you know, a month from now, I'll look at it and go, eh. But I yeah. shot one years, probably, I don't know when it was, it was when Tammy was still helping me style and stuff. So that means before she got really busy. So that was probably somewhere between 2000, 2005. And I shot this thing and took it to New York. I'd shot it at the fair when they were closed. You know, they let us get on the merry-go-round and shoot all these different places. And, you know, nobody was there. We couldn't do anything we wanted. Took it to a friend of mine who was a, um, photography director or something like that for macy's we were having dinner yeah. and he looked at it and he was like no you it was fashion and he yeah. was like no you can't you, you can't use these and don't show these to anybody and i was like why oh, he was the yeah. models he was like i said what's wrong with you he goes, the model is horrible oh no like, really and then i went and, look, and then after he said it i went back and looked at it with a more objective eye and not just the whole i just shot this i you know, it took me a lot to get them to let me in there. All the stuff that came into the shoot that doesn't yeah. have anything to do with the actual image at the end, but helped you create it, but doesn't, you can't see all that. I looked at it and I was like, yeah, he's right. The model completely oh, ruined this entire shoot. And That's it wasn't hard. because she was oh. a bad model. She just didn't have the look right. that was needed for that. And it was just one of those things where I was like, yeah, all right, you're right. Never showed it to anybody. It's a... Uh... Those kind of scenarios are heartbreaking. Yeah. I, I had a I had a shoot a while back, um, this editorial, and like there was, oh, it's hard to even talk about. It was basically had to rent hotel rooms, had to like get permission to shoot on this big estate, all this stuff, and then five minutes before I start shooting, there was a problem with one of the models and like the wardrobe, Ooh. and then so she was like, oh yeah, I can't wear any of those shoes. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> and uh -oh. oh, I felt so bad for the stylist because it's like I can still make it work, but it was the stylist who had been planning and pulling from different countries for this shoot, and then all the, her pairs of like designer heels were, weren't going to be used. Uh. And I was just like, and then it, what was bad for her is that she then had to go to the PRs who sent her stuff and tell why right their stuff that they spent couple hundred pounds to send her because of brexit is yeah. now not even in the magazine oh, oh it's yeah but yeah. yeah you learn from those kind of things though <laughs> ah you know it for me it's i'm happy when somebody has i don't even know what to call it but when they they tell you the truth you know when they oh, look at something it. and they will tell you this isn't good you can't use this as yeah. opposed to like i remember you know, I'll go to meetings and they flip through your book and they literally flip through the book in about a minute, minute oh. and a half. And then they go, yeah, thank you so much for coming in. I'll let you, I'll definitely let you know if something comes up, we can use you for. All right. Yeah. Well, you and I both know we're never going to work with each other. Why don't you just say thank you, but this isn't what we need. Yeah. We're not a good match, but thank you so much. Yeah. Grab a coffee on the way out. Exactly. Yeah. See, I like looking back, all the like growing I've done as a fashion photographer was when somebody straight up said, stop being an idiot, do it like this. Like at school, one of the um, guys who critiqued our final portfolio, 
I guess he, there was like a level of critique he was doing for the students, depending if they were like serious photographers right. or if they were like, I look cool in it, on Instagram type photographer. <laughs> yeah. um, and he just looked at me and we, we knew each other pretty well. And he's like, honestly, and I was like, yep, let me have it. And he was like, you need to up the like value of your photos, like put money towards these personal shoots, all these things. And ever since then, it's like, stop trying to self style shoots, like yeah. not having the model do her own hair and makeup, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And like, so that, and then coming here, like recently I had my portfolio. I always hate looking at my own portfolio. Cause it's like, you know, how the image was made, you know, what went into it. So there's yeah. not this like magical as you flip through Vogue, like, Oh my God, it's beautiful. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I'm just like, I told this agent who I was lucky enough to like shoot a campaign at her house. Cause her house is actually like a location house. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So she agreed to look at my portfolio and just give me some advice. And she was like, it's great. She basically said, nobody's going to want to flip through 70 pictures. Oh, like, yeah. Narrow it down. And I was like, oh yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to have those people that do that. Like the first, when I first started shooting, I mean, when I, well, not first started shooting because I've been shooting since I was 11. But when I first tried to start shooting full time, what I was doing was shooting a lot of model tests for a lot yeah. of little modeling agencies. And I went to one and the woman flipped through it and she goes, you're a good photographer, but these models are not good. The styling needs to be better. Hair and makeup needs to be better. And then once you get all that together, you'll do better. And then yeah. another guy told me, your books are all over the place. He said, you need to find a way to make it flow. So it kind of tells a story. And those were things that nobody had ever told me before. And then yeah. my favorite thing ever was I went to New York looking for an agent and I'd been on my own maybe three years at the time. And this guy, we're still friends today and he's flipping through my book and he, he wasn't looking to take on anybody new. He had just agreed to see me and he stops at this cover of this magazine that I'd shot. He looks at it and he goes, what the fuck is this doing in here and i went what he goes is it because it's a cover i went uh yeah he goes take it out it's not good yeah. he said the lighting's good the photography the model's terrible the, that dress is not good the the way they did the the graphics not good get rid of it right and i was just like wow yeah well, we have been friends ever since that day because he told me the truth yeah. See, yeah. like, and you, it's, I feel like it's one of those things when I get the truth, it's like a band aid. It hurts for a minute. And you're like, this guy who's been working in the industry 70 years, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. That's a good photo. And then you get home and your wife's like, no, he's right. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, then you realize that, oh, yeah, it's not great. I had that. I have kind of the same story. Like, I shot a cover story for a magazine and it's, it was one of those things where it was like, the models were great, the lighting's great but it's like the complete opposite side of the fashion industry from what I normally shoot. Yeah. And so I was told like, yeah, it's kind of flipping the book. Just take it out. Right. And I'm like, but it's a cover story. Um, yeah. They're like, yeah, you'll get another one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you say so. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, it's good. I think to have other people look because for so long I didn't, I was just looking at my own stuff, choosing what yeah. I thought was best. And now it's nice to like, then I got to a point where I was sending it to people I knew like, Hey, here are four or five yeah. shots. What do you think? But lately it's been good because I mean, I've totally switched how I'm shooting. I'm not yeah. shooting any kind of, if I'm still shooting fashion now, but I'm shooting it for like the smaller B2B kind of clients or people I've already shot for before, but all the yeah. new stuff that's on my, I don't even have a fashion section on my website anymore. Oh, right. so I have it hidden. And if you want to see it, I send you the link to it and, Right. But everything I'm shooting now is more advertising kind of looking lifestyle kind of stuff where I'm doing more stories about like the last one I just did was very editorial, but it was um, a friend of mine's a surgeon oh, and so went in and did like, I shot three different surgeries, a knee sur replacement, a hip replacement and an orthoscopic knee Wait, surgery. Like you shot those surgeries? Yeah, dude, they have a shot. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It is a knee filleted open 
with no, like I, him putting the kneecap back in it kind of a thing. Please tell me the doctor turned around and was like. A couple of times, kind of. That, that would have been so good. I mean, he was basically teaching me while he was in there. He was like, now see, this is the, the hip joint, the ball joint for the hip. And here's the real, like he cut off the real ones like, and showing me the real one. And he said, now here's the replacement we're going to use. And here's how, and then he's like, there's a shot I've got of him like leaning into it, like really just pushing with his feet all spread apart. <laughs> I mean, that's your story. And my shoot tomorrow is we're shooting black wardrobe from recent collections. <laughs> <laughs> but you, like I said, man, you do an amazing job of it. I mean, it's like, you can tell that you have studied the dudes in the top 1% of the 1% who are shooting yeah. this kind of stuff and you're not just flipping through a magazine and going, Oh, that looks cool. I'll do something similar to that. And then you go out and shoot some stuff. It's a half-assed version of right. you know, what you would see in Vogue. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you kiss the right person's ass. You'll be in Vogue next year. I mean, bring me the booty and I'll kiss. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, um, no, but yeah, it, it's an everyday. Cause I've only been shooting fashion since 2016. Yeah. Um, before that, I was going to be a food photographer. And before that, I was going to be a photojournalist. And before that, I was riding a skateboard. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a quick progression to get here. But, um, dude, but food now, photography? Dude, there is so much matter. that went into food photography that I didn't know. Like food stylists that have tweezers that move crumbs around to make it look natural. I'm like, if you just do that, like it looks natural, right? No. Okay. Nah, that, yeah. Yeah. So I think I did like, one assignment for school and it was like a series of food photography things. And I was like, there's so much effort. And it's like, you can't, I love to talk. I know that's a shock for everybody. Yeah. But no. um, you can't talk to a cheeseburger. I was just in the studio. Like, all right, what do I do now? This yeah. That's the thing I like about shooting. I don't like shooting stills. I don't like shooting food. It's because I want to have some kind of interaction with whatever I'm shooting, the person yeah. I'm shooting. And you don't get that. And I've shot food three or four times. And I, I feel like, I mean, literally I get set up, set my lights, set whatever. And I'm set. And then I just sit there on my ass while the food stylist does whatever. And yeah. I go, tch, tch, tch. all right, that looks pretty good. I think for like the food shoots, I think I was maybe shooting like 10 frames yeah. for a whole day. Cause it was like basically looking through capture one at the live view from the top down. And I'm just sitting there like, all right, space bar. All yeah. right. This is great. I did um, the same thing with like stills on, uh, we were shooting jackets. And oh, yeah. the stylist was just styling the jackets and then I was shooting and it would take, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to set the jackets up and style them properly. And then I'd go, yeah. mm, all right, tweak that a little bit. All right, we're good. And yeah. then knowing the whole time I'm getting paid about two, three times what she's getting paid. Is oh, yeah. all the work. With those lay down jobs, I'm always like, why am I the one making, I'm, I don't say it out loud. But oh, I'm I don't thinking, either. Why <laughs> Why am I getting paid more than her? And I'm just sitting here checking my Instagram and hitting the button on a computer. But yeah, I, I haven't shot a laid down job. I don't think I've done one since like 2017, 2018. Oh, yeah. I think I have one coming up in June. It's, it's, it's for a catalog and I'm shooting all the on fig stuff. And then they want to do a day of lay downs. Like, all right, okay. whatever. I just go there and if they're happy to hit pay on that invoice button. Damn right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right now, especially after lockdown, I'm like, I'll shoot pretty much whatever. How long would y'all's lockdown back home? I, let's see. I didn't work anyway from March 13th until July 20 something, 24, 25th, 26th. Okay. So I was, I literally sat around, did nothing for four and a half months. Yeah, that, that sounds, I think we were March to July as well. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, I sat so much, I think I got sciatica now because my ass hurts half the time. Oh, man. I was like, if I don't get off this sofa, I'm going to have bed sores before this whole <laughs> lockdown's over. It's ridiculous. But um, it was weird during that first lockdown. I went through like a full depression. Oh, yeah? Like I was, I'm poor Annabelle. Like I was miserable. Like, because I live for fashion photography. That's what I right. do. It's like eat, sleep, breathe, fashion photography. I was doing that. And I was doing the same thing, which was driving me crazy that I do every day. I wake up, have coffee, and then I pull out one of the books from my library over here of like a master fashion photographer. And I go through and spend like an hour looking through one of their books, just like 
looking at photos, breaking down how they lit things, like all this stuff. And then, and then I couldn't do anything with that. I was like, well, I'll just sit here and watch them do it on YouTube. This is great. Um, yeah, but I, I was so excited once I was allowed to work after that. Like what saved me was I have a group of people who I work really well with. And like, luckily I've fooled them into thinking I'm a decent fashion photographer. So they <laughs> want to work with me. And um, I just started pitching ideas to magazines. Like I, I wasn't driven by money right. because luckily knock on wood, my wife was a key worker. So she still worked and we could pay our mortgage through it all. Right. Um, and she's so supportive of me being a fashion photographer. She was like, just go shoot. Don't worry about the money. Just pitch ideas, get behind the camera and then money will start rolling in again. Um, that's great. That's I, I think I, I probably shot as soon as we opened up, I think I shot like seven or eight stories in like a month. Damn. I was like, and I, I was paying for it. I was paying for the studio. I was paying right. for like catering on set. I was paying for everybody to get there. But I was just kind of like, I've got to hold a camera. Um, yeah. So now, luckily, we're here. Well, it sounds like it's paying off. Yeah. It looks Seems like it's paying good. off. I mean, I love it. Yeah. I can pay mortgage. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Luckily, my wife, she worked the whole time as well because they, they could work from home. She runs um, outpatient for rehab for drug and oh, alcohol yeah. abuse. But they found a way. She, I mean, she she's their COO. So she's kind of in charge of everything that happens around there. Yeah. And it amazed me how quickly she converted everything from in person. She literally did it in about three days. She converted yeah. it in person to online to Zoom and had everybody on board and yeah. picking up new patients. And I mean, it went at one point, it slowed down a little bit, I guess, because everybody was happy being home drinking. And then they realized that they had gotten a little out of control. <laughs> right. Yeah. A little bit. So I guess it picked up, but yeah, it's nice to have that. So I wasn't too freaked out. And then the, you know, with the stimulus and the PPP loans or whatever, or right. grants, I guess is what it ended up being. Yeah, that was a nice surprise. I didn't know I'd still get them. And I still, since I'm still a U.S. citizen, Hell yeah. I still get them over here. And I'm like, heck yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then they get send you that, this is not taxable income. And I'm like walking around the streets of Chelmsford trying to high five people <laughs> over like 400 bucks or whatever it was. Yeah. What I didn't understand is so, but the first time my wife and I got, what was it, 1200? So that, Tammy yeah. and I got 1200, and one of my daughters got 500. The other one got my 18 year old who's in college got nothing or she's 21 now. She was like 20. She right. got nothing. The next time I think it was Tammy and I got the 600 and Ashlyn got the 600. So she got the full amount the second time. The right. third time we all four got money, including my 20 year old, 21 year old. And so I'm trying to figure out, I was like, so don't they owe me for like the last two times before that on her? Right. Like, Cause all I was thinking when they did, it was like, well, I guess she's over 18. They're not paying, but I still got to pay for her to be in college. It'd be nice yeah. to spend that cash my way, but. I think the older probably needs more money than the young. I yeah, know. exactly. The one in college, I need the more money more for her. It's like birthdays back in the day as a kid, you'd get like 20 bucks in your birthday card. Then you hit like when you're a grown up and you have money needs, it's like, no. Just yeah. happy birthday. Happy, here's your happy birthday card with nothing in yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Here, here's my signature on paper. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah. My grandmother did that. She would give you money. Like when you were younger, you'd get like a hundred dollars at Christmas or something. Yeah. And then as you got, it went to 50. And then at one point it became like five bucks in a like raisin box or something. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that, that once I got married. <laughs> yeah. I, now I need money. Yeah, I could use the cash. Let's go back to that hundred dollar thing. Yeah, let's keep that bad. Uh, we go. So, what do you? So, how many campaigns have you shot since the whole thing in, opened up? Oh, um, quite a few. Um, I'm trying to think. Are they all different companies, or are they a lot of the same? So it's a lot of repeat clients, which is That's great. Good. I, I love yeah. working with the same people, but um, yeah. So I've, I've shot quite a few for this brand, that Mimi London brand. Yeah. Then there's another clothing brand called Sister Jane. Um, so I've shot some, uh, quite a few for them because there's like, it's Sister Jane and then they have a company called Dream and then there's a company called Gospel. Okay. And so, yeah, they, 
for some reason like working with me so they just keep bringing me in to shoot for them and i'm okay that's That's, i have i have another one for them um thursday oh very cool who's choosing the models are they choosing are you choosing um so their art director okay um, i think that's her title she uh she has a really good eye for it so she they they come up with the the collect the concept of the collection and it's like I said, when it's an editorial and no one's getting paid, basically, like yeah. you're lucky if it covers the studio. Right. Um, you get full creative control. You actually have to do work to produce the shoot. Yeah. And then with these jobs that they pay you some money, I just show up on the day and photograph the like make the images. I feel like those are the easier days. Um, if they're listening to this, they're not easy days at all. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they do. When it's editorial work, I pick the model most of the time because right. I like to be real hands-on. Um, it's basically me and the team, creative team. We yeah. So an agency, I'll send them a request, say, we got the shoot coming up. Can you send us a book of who's in town? They'll send us like a package and we'll go through multiple agencies' packages, kind of get, <clears throat> we'll pick our favorites and we'll critique each other's favorites and narrow it down to um, the winner. Right who has to sit and listen to my terrible dad jokes all day. <laughs> I guess the good thing is you're in London. So you have a, a bigger pool of really good models to choose from. Oh my God. It's unreal. Like there, there, I have a shoot tomorrow. I'm shooting for <clears throat> a cool publication. And um, the story is it was pitched to me by the stylist, uh, Tasha and Tasha. Tasha or Tasha. I don't know. I'm a, I'm American. I pronounce all these names wrong. Right. Um, so she came to me and she said she wants to do this story about black, the black collect, like the collection, the black pieces of wardrobe from recent collections. There we right. go. And um, got there in the end. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not hard to impress with the story. That sounds great. Let's shoot it. And it still freaks me out to this day. The like designers I get to like pull from, or she gets to pull from because it's like back home if you want a designer piece, you got to go to like buy it, shoot yeah. it and then return it. That kind of scenario. Um, and like all day yesterday, she was like sending me updates. Like, Oh yeah. Versace just confirmed some pieces. Chanel confirmed some pe- some pieces. Molly Goddard confirmed. I'm just sitting there like, like what is happening? What is Dude, this? That's killer. Yeah. But it means, it means, I think that means two things. One, you've got a good stylist with great connections that they trust. And two, yeah. I'm assuming they asked to see the photographer or see some of the work. I mean, they, I'm uh, going to pretend that my work has something to do with it. I, I would, maybe it does. I don't know. Because I would, because I would, as a designer, I don't think I would give up pieces to somebody who I didn't think was going to shoot it well. So either they trust her enough to know that you're good, or they've had her show, like, hey, send us his website real quick so we can at least see who you're shooting with and we'll decide if we're sending yeah, I'm it. sure what they said was, wow. He's basically Stephen Mizell. That's exactly get, what they said. I, that's what they said. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I heard from here. <laughs> so starting tomorrow, get your little black tent and that's it. set it up and just shoot through it and don't speak to anyone. I'm going to come in wearing the Mizell wig with the bucket hat and sunglasses and just have a cigarette dangling out of my mouth. I'm exactly. Come in and, shoot and then just walk away. And all black. Yeah. All, well, all black. black. Yeah. And you don't I'm say. Either, a, either, I'm either dressed like all black or I'm dressed like a mechanic, like wearing <laughs> and stuff. So at the last collection I shot, um, the lighting company brought the van of light and I'm just out there like helping them unload, bringing it in. The guy was like, Oh, what, what time's your photographer getting here? And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, are you, aren't you like the first assistant or something? I was like, no, I'm the photographer. He just looked at me and said, you don't look like a photographer. And I'm like, thank, thank you. I guess. So what, yeah, I'd be like, what does photographer look like exactly? Like, to be fair, I was wearing like dirty dicky jeans and like yeah. some big boots and then just like a flannel shirt. And yeah, then sometimes I, that pays off. Cause I, I mean, did, I was um shooting in Memphis and I was, you know, like baggy shorts, a t-shirt, whatever. And I yeah. was shooting. And I noticed when I finished shooting, they had started filming a uh, lifetime or Hallmark movie or something across in the park from where we had been right. shooting. And my hotel was right across from there. So I could see out. So I went and had dinner. And on the way back from dinner, I saw all these people standing around staring. And I was like, what are they looking at? And then I was like, oh, they're still filming. So, cause they've been setting up and now they're actually shooting. Right. So I went back into my hotel room. I sat there and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go over there and see what they're doing. 
And the security for the shoot was pushing all these people away, telling them they can't come, you know, sorry, you can't be right here. You can't come up into this is the set area, whatever. Yeah. But because of the way I was dressed, I literally just walked straight up onto the set, grabbed the water out of the ice cooler, <laughs> and just sat there and watched what was going on because everybody just assumed because of the way I looked that I was part of the crew. Yeah. Like, yeah, he must be one of us, guys. Let him on in. Yeah. Nobody said anything. And I saw like, and I think part of it was I wasn't going. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, but yeah. basically, I saw the still photographer, and I was like, "All right, I want to see what she's shooting." And I went over and talked yeah. to her. I was like, "So, what camera are you using over here?" She goes, "Well, they make me use uh, the Nikon yeah. D810 or 850 or whatever it was at the time she was using, and she was using a blimp around it." And but then I was on um, another set, and the dude was using that Sony A7 III right. or whatever it is, and that right. dude was no blimp, just not sound. Those things are silent. Oh yeah, yeah. It weirds me out when I shoot with my Leica, like how quiet it is. Yeah. Because like I have like, so the, my cameras are like different levels of volume. I have the 5D Mark III, so you just have the normal like. Ta, 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 ta. Yeah. The, the 5DS is a little quieter. Yep. And then the Leica is just kind of like a ninja. It just doesn't make any noise. And then I have my Hasselblad that's like. Boom, boom. Oh yeah, I think. Wakes everybody up in like a hundred yard radius. It's yeah. Like, that slap just like. And I'm just like, oh my god! Well, at least they know problem. when you shot it, and they know to move. Yeah, they, they don't have to wonder if I, if I shot an image. That's for sure. Are you shooting film on that, or are you shooting digital back? It's film. Yeah, I got a film one, and I have a um, I have a Mia RB67. Talk oh, about no. loud! That thing is louder than the Hasselblad. Oh, the RB is like, yeah, it's a camera. It's a tank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's impressive, but um, yeah, yeah I, I want to digital back. I used to shoot weddings with that thing. With the. <laughs> With both of those, the RB and the Hasselblad. Do you so and so take this? Doo -doo -doo? Yeah. <laughs> and then you crank it. Yep, exactly. Uh, good times, though. I love those cameras. Yeah, they're fun. I haven't played with it in a long time. It's over sitting on my desk over here on top of my dresser, whatever that thing is. I don't know what you call that thing. It's a cabinet, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> a piece of wood. Yeah, it's a piece of wood with drawers and doors. Yeah on it and there's the, the camera the camera sitting on top yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's basically what i got over here it's supposed to be a bookshelf but it's more of like a camera shelf yeah magazine holder yeah yeah i just got a bunch of old cameras sitting over there from everything from a box camera to the rb to two old what is this a yashica and, oh, a, man. and a pentax 35 millimeter and then some little crank film camera i mean it's literally like a little box like this no, so it's about that wide, but about this yeah. big, this thin. And you just do like this. That's what you need to shoot your next story on. <laughs> to show up with that one camera. Ready? Go. There you go. Move. Yeah. Yeah, There's I don't even know if I can get filmed London. for that anymore. There's still people in London who shoot on like eight millimeter, like the video cameras where you have to like pull the trigger. Oh, yeah. But I, I would get so trigger happy. I'd be like filming the coffee machine on set. I'd be like <laughs> filming everything. Oh, God. Dude, I gotta run, but thank you so much. This was fun. Absolutely. Oh, wait, yeah. I do want to ask you something else. How do you how did you find your assistants when you got there? Um. So one of the guys I use a lot, what he assisted another photographer, and I was that like annoying guy that just wanted to be a part of something before I could work. And so I was like talking to these photographers, like if you just need somebody to help carry your lights, I'll do it just to get out of the house. And um, yeah, so I met him because we were both like assisting for the same other guy okay uh, yeah and then when i couldn't use him he would give me a contact to somebody and then they would give me a contact to somebody um yeah so oh, that's just cool yeah no so you really didn't send out anything to like get work it's all from it came from instagram or did you send out some little promo pieces when you got there or emails like so when i when i got here because i had been coming back and forth since 2009 oh wow but, for 2009, 2010 was skateboard years. So I didn't really know what a camera was. I was like, right. it's fine. As long as it takes a picture of me skating, I'm happy. Um, and then, so I, I can't remember what year I started coming here, like looking at photography, but couldn't have been any, yeah, any earlier than 2015, 2016. And yeah, um, yeah so I had years of not worrying about getting paid here. So I was able to come here and like, claw little hooks into the industry and like 
little designers who needed photos. I would shoot for them and then right. kind of build my way up. And then like they would tell somebody about me. So next time I was in London, I would do a job for them and then they would tell somebody. But yeah, it's um I send out my portfolio pretty regularly, but that's just to like potential agents. And I'm yeah. kind of like, hey, sign me. I'm tired of booking my own work. Right. Um yeah, yeah, but yeah, I would say like 90% of my work comes through Instagram. Damn. Yeah. You random messages here and there and then or they'll go to my Instagram and then click on the link to my website and then send me an email. Well, damn, man. I got to get my Instagram up and running better. I'm not I mean, getting any work off Instagram. I always tell people like the first person I'm going to hire when I can hire like a full-time employee is an Instagram person cuz the day I don't have to worry about it is going to be a good day. Well, maybe that's my problem. I'm not putting enough on Instagram. I literally like post three times a week, maybe. I think I post one a day. Yeah, see, I don't do that. I post literally one picture a week and then two things about a podcast. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, you're doing it. So that's, maybe that's maybe that's the problem. All right, dude. Well, thank you so much. This was fun, man. man. I enjoyed I enjoyed catching up with you. Anytime. It, it was good it was to cool. hear a fellow American. <laughs> Well, who knows? Maybe I'll get over to London and we'll grab a cup of coffee or something. Do it. If you come, bring me some sweet tea. Oh my gosh, I miss sweet tea. All right. Well, I will let you know if I'm going to make it over there. I'll make sure to grab some tea and bring it with me. Thank you. Some Bojangles. Right. Oh. Yeah, I'll grab you a whole like big, two big gallons of Bojangles iced tea. You will see a short, tea. bald man cry. I'm not even <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what you need to do is when you get a little extra cash, talk to Bojangles about opening up a franchise in London. That's it. My, so you my have all title, the iced tea you want, all the sweet man, tea. My, my title would be like fashion photographer, creative director at a coffee shop, owner of Bojangles UK. There you go. See? <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, I'll talk to you very soon. Take it easy, man. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right. See ya. Bye.